everyone, Elton from Gaia Games. Welcome to How to Play Ninjas Unleashed. I'm very excited to bring this board game to you. We know it's going to bring you lots of fun. This is a deck building strategy game suited for two to six players. It is best played with four players and the game can take on average about 90 minutes. The game is a simple game where a player, also known as a Shogun, needs to recruit and train students into apprentice ninjas build their house strength with elite ninjas and enhanced cards, attempt and win missions, and play tactic cards to score celestial points to win the game. Sounds simple? Well, it won't be, as you can expect your opponents to play sabotage, tactic, and other special effect cards on you. The game also allows you to create your own winning conditions should you choose to. There are 10 different types of cards in this game. There are elite ninjas, apprentice ninjas, Sensei Ninjas, Student, Enhance, Sabotage, Counter, Tactic, House, and Mission Cards. Enhance, Sabotage, and Ninja Cards are played from your hand into your house or another player's house. Tactic and Counter Cards are played from your hand into the discard pile once the effect of the card has been used. There are also Mission and Action Token point markers and a player turn token. There are a number of nuances which you will get familiar with, where different combinations of cards played create varied enhanced tactics and strategies that could be used during gameplay. Each player receives a player board, three action turn tokens, three matching mission tokens or miniatures if you've bought them, one matching points marker, one sensei ninja, one house guard and an apprentice ninja. Set up your player board as shown. Elite ninja cards are played in the spaces on your player board and apprentice ninja cards are played on the right hand side of your player board. The area where the elite and apprentice ninja cards are played is called a squad. Sensei and student ninjas are played on the lower left hand side of your player board. This area is called a school. Your house card is placed on the player board. Your mission and three action turn tokens are placed on the bottom left hand side of your player board. All the cards and tokens played on and around your player board make up your house. Cards that are played into your house remain there to removed. Elite, enhance and sabotage cards can have an ongoing effect, positive or negative to your house. So ensure you stay across what these cards can do and trigger their effects accordingly. Set up your game board as shown with the deck, bottom of the deck, mission deck piles, and student deck on the game board. Place three mission cards face up. These are missions available for players apprentice ninjas to attempt during the mission phase. Each player is dealt five cards which they hold in their hand. Now, you're all set and ready to play the game. There are four phases for each round played. These are start of round phase, action phase, mission phase, and end of round phase. Each player plays each phase before moving on to the next phase. There is also a handy quick reference card to help players play each phase. On the other side of this card is a quick reference for dice roll rules. In a two to four player game, the game is won when a player achieves 20 celestial points at the end of a round. For a five player game, a total of 18 celestial points, or with a six player game, a total of 15 celestial points. You may set your own winning conditions, which could be varied based on what you prefer. For example, you may also state that a Shogun may not win a game if they have a sabotage card in their house or do not have an elite ninja in their school. Have fun setting your own winning conditions once you have a good grasp of the game. If there is more than one player who has achieved the winning objective of the game at the end of a round, the winner is determined by the total number of missions won and then by the total strength of their elite ninjas. If all else fails, use a dice roll to determine the winner. Of course, lowest roll wins. 
or better yet, replay the game. I'm sure you'll want to. Now, you need to be aware of how points are scored. They're scored as follows. Each elite card that enters your squad is three celestial points. Each mission card one is two celestial points. Each apprentice card that enters your squad is one celestial point. Each enhanced card in your house is one celestial point. Each sabotage card in your house minus two celestial points. You lose these points if these cards are no longer a part of your house. Remember, ninjas in your school do not provide any celestial points. At the top of the game board, you will find a point scale from 0 to 20 and at the bottom of the game board, a point scale from 21 to 40. This is used to track the total celestial points for players. At the start of the game, all shoguns place their points marker on the top left hand side of the game board on 1. Each time a shogun gains or loses points, they move their points marker on the game board by the number of points gained or lost. A shogun with negative celestial points in total remains on 0 till they have more positive points than negative points for their house. At any given time, players should be able to work out the total points scored by just looking at their house and adding up their points. Okay, so let's get into playing each of the phases now. All players roll a dice and the lowest dice roll starts the round. This player receives the player turn token and the player turn token moves from one player to the next in a clockwise direction at the end of a round. The start of round phase is a mission setup, student recruitment and training phase. It is an important phase as it allows you to recruit students who you can then train into apprentices who can then go on missions. If a school has lost its sensei ninja, players may choose to move a ninja, an elite or apprentice from their squad to their school. Without a ninja in your school, players are not able to recruit students or graduate them into apprentices. Players may choose to take on one or more missions by placing their apprentices from their squad on missions, starting with the player that has the player turn token, and then in a clockwise manner. Players also place their mission tokens on their apprentice to indicate that the apprentice belongs to their house. Only apprentices may go on missions. In the very first round, you will only have one apprentice placed on a mission. However, in subsequent rounds, you may have built up more apprentices in your squad. You may place up to three apprentices on three missions. Only one apprentice may be placed on a mission from your squad. If there is more than one apprentice on a mission, that is, two or more players have decided to take on the same mission, then that mission is challenged. I'll tell you more about that shortly. There are a lot of advantages of winning missions, but there can also be dire consequences for your apprentices. You will need to be strategic about playing missions. They have the power to completely transform your game, so make your decisions wisely. Once all players have finished placing apprentices on missions, the players then recruit a student into their school. Each player draws a student card from the student deck and places it into their school, only if they have a sensei ninja in their school. Note, students are not ninjas. In a clockwise manner, starting with the player with the player turn token, each player rolls a single dice for each student, unless of course modified by a card or a shogun special ability. A little more on that soon. Note, on the top right hand side of the student card, each student either has a plus one or a dash. A plus one automatically allows you to add one to your dice roll. If the result of a dice roll is a four or more, your student graduates to an apprentice ninja. Return a student to the bottom of the student deck and pick the first apprentice from the top of the discard pile, and if there is not, from the bottom of the deck. However, if your dice roll result is a 1 or less, 
your student is discarded. In that case, return the student card to the student deck. A two or three dice roll result means that the student remains in your school as a student to try again in a subsequent round. There are certain cards or Shogun special abilities that can affect the result of the dice roll. That's it for start of round phase. Pretty straightforward. You set up for missions, you recruit students, and train them into apprentices. Players then move on to the next phase of the round, which is the action phase. This is where the bulk of attacks, defense, and tactics get played. It is a very interactive phase, and players must pay attention to what other players are doing and counter their actions if necessary, or suffer the consequences of their lack of diligence. Each player starts with three actions, unless modified by a card. Starting with the player who has the player turn token, each player must play all of their actions before moving on to the next player in a clockwise manner. A player may use an action to draw a card from the deck, play a card from their hand, trigger the effects of any card in their house. For example, effects from Elite Ninjas, Enhanced Guards, or their Shogun Special Ability, which is listed on their house card, and if allowed by the card. Or, use all three actions to discard their hand and draw five new cards from the deck. Note that there are some sabotage cards that require you to use an action to trigger their effect before any other actions are played by that player. You definitely want to get rid of those sabotage cards in your house very quickly. A card in your hand has no effect until it is played. Now, when players use an action, they can flip their action turn token from the green side to the red side. It is used to keep track of the actions played by a player. Ensure you use this space to build up your house with enhanced, elite, and apprentice cards, or sabotage your enemies with sabotage cards. Be aware of counter cards and use your tactic cards wisely. This phase could be the difference between making or breaking your house. Note, a counter card does not require an action to be played and can be played at any time the card description says you may play it. So stay across your counter cards and ensure you use them well and at the appropriate time. Also, a counter card may also be countered by another counter card that allows you to stop a card from being played. Battle it out when it matters. Also, you will come across a few keywords when playing cards, which I'm about to briefly touch on. Burn. This refers to cards in your house only. So when a card states to burn a card, this refers to discarding a card from your house. Strike. This refers to cards in an opponent's house. So when a card states to strike a card, it refers to discarding a card in another Shogun's house. Pick refers to drawing the first card from the top of the discard pile or from the bottom of the deck. Once all players have completed playing their actions, the game moves on to the mission phase. This is when the apprentices that were sent on missions during the start of round phase become the focus. Only one apprentice may attempt a mission. As such, if there are more than one apprentices on a single mission, that mission is challenged and must be resolved. As you can see, this mission is challenged as it has three apprentices on it. This mission is unchallenged as it has one apprentice on it. The third mission is not even being attempted by any player. All challenged missions are resolved before an apprentice takes on a mission. All players who have to resolve a challenge roll a single dice unless modified by a card to determine who wins the right to play the mission. The highest dice roll wins the right to play the mission. All other players return their apprentices to their squad. However, if your dice roll is a one or smaller, your apprentice is discarded. You will note that each apprentice ninja card has a modifier number on the top right hand side of the card which ranges from minus two to plus two. The negative numbers 
may be applied once to any opponent's dice roll and is played in a clockwise manner, starting with the player with the player turn token. The positive numbers may be applied to your own dice roll or to any others you choose. Using these numbers is a tactical play, which could determine whether a player's apprentice returns to his squad, gets discarded, or gets to attempt the mission. If alliances have not been formed or broken in the previous phase, they could have certainly changed in the challenged mission phase. In a clockwise manner, each mission is played by the player who has an apprentice remaining on the mission. The player rolls two dice, unless modified by a card. On the mission card, you will notice a range of numbers in green on the left hand side and a range of numbers in red on the right hand side. The green range indicates the range in which the mission is successful. The red range indicates the range in which the mission has failed and in which the apprentice gets discarded. Any number outside these ranges means the apprentice is unsuccessful and returns to their squad in shame, but lucky to have survived to try another mission in another round. A player may use their modifier numbers on their Apprentice Ninja card to modify their dice roll result to either enhance their success rate or at the very least not fail the mission. Note, counter cards or Shogun special abilities that modify the dice roll result could be very handy or disastrous if used during this time. Also, pay special attention to the ranges of numbers on the missions. Some missions have a low range to win, so you may want to consider using an apprentice ninja who has a negative dice roll modifier, just to give you a better chance. Now, on a successful mission, the apprentice ninja is blessed by the celestial sword and transforms into an elite ninja. In this event, discard the apprentice card and pick the first elite card from the top of the discard pile or from the bottom of the deck and return the elite to your squad. If there are any effects that are triggered by your elite entering your squad, you may use them now. You may also play the successful mission card at this time. Once played, place the mission card below the apprentice card in your house. The mission card is now not used any further unless working out winning conditions of the game. Once all missions have been attempted, this ends the mission phase. Replace any mission cards and empty slots with new mission cards from the mission deck. Players then move on to the end of round phase. This phase is a tidy up phase. There are some elite ninjas whose effects are triggered in this phase if they are in play. Also during this phase, all players reset their action turn tokens to the green side. And finally, the player turn token is moved clockwise to the next player, indicating that they will now start the next new round. One final thing to note is that every player has a house card with a unique Shogun special ability. Ensure you get familiar with this card and use these special abilities at the right time to enhance your house or cause chaos to your opponents. They are very powerful if used well. Note that some Shogun special abilities may only be triggered in a specific phase. Use them if intended at that time. You may not use them in a different phase. That's it for Ninjas Unleashed. We are certain you will have fun playing this very exciting game.